We've gone a big journey on starting from what hell is to where it, uh, you know, just the understanding it before we can actually ask the question. And the whole point of all these classes was to build up to this very moment to understand if God's good. So let me just ask you a couple questions before we get started, just to brush up your memory. There's four different words used for hell. You know, when people say, what the hell, uh, they could be saying, what the four other things. What the Gehenna, what the, she what the Hades, Steve, any? What the Tartarus, and one more. No. What the Sheol. That's right. So I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't say those, but <clears throat> there's four different ways to view hell. All we know in English saying is, is hell. But uh, throughout the New Testament, there was different words different, used because they understood it differently. Up until now, when we've got the most, we've got the best view of it ever in the history of the world. Um, we know the most about it. Even though we know probably a half a percent of what it's going to be like. Um, nobody knows. All right, so we built up to this point, and now let's just answer some questions on it. And if you guys have any questions, let's go through it. I wrote some up here, so I'm going to ask you guys to help me out. Um, I I made a list of the verses, and uh, I made a list of the verses. Um, that we've been using to prove some of our thoughts on it. And I'm going to ask you guys to help me. So let's go through these questions and, and see who can answer, give the best answer for each one. And uh, so don't expect me to answer them all. I think at this point, with everything you guys learned, you guys can probably give a pretty good explanation of it. So uh, let's just go down the list. And if you guys have a question that so far that's been brought up about hell, let's talk about it right now. We'll spend the first few minutes doing that. So, um, does hell really exist? Thoughts? Yes. How do we know that? Jesus said it himself. Good enough. Everybody okay with that answer? If you're talking to somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus, that's probably not going to work. But I don't know any other way to prove it, other than you know he's that's what he said, and I believe it. What you know because of who he is. Um, so does hell really exist? Jesus said it did. Yeah. All right. You guys. Uh, okay. Let's try somebody else. Kim, where is hell located? Give your best answer. Doesn't mean, we're not you know doesn't mean to be. Well, I think we all believe how it's located like underneath us. Okay. So all right. the place where I guess how the Bible has described it is a place of fire, never ending place where people are always not people, but like I mean. Well, where? It would be a, yes, a place. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else <laughs> think they have a better explanation, or is not that good? Not on earth, Josh says. Okay. Where is hell located? That's a tough one. And I don't know that the Bible's very clear on it, other than what we talked about last week is probably the best explanation. Steve, any ideas? Where's hell located? Beneath us. Alright, beneath us. Hate, when we talked about Hades and we talked about. Um, Sheol, it's sometimes seen that it was talking about beneath us, in the depths. Come on in. Alright, so where is Hades? And what we learned about Gehenna, remember about Gehenna? What was the characteristics of Gehenna? Where was Gehenna located? Outside the walls. Outside the city, right. So, so far as we, you know, there's some, it's good reason to believe that hell is going to be outside of the city, wherever that may be, whether it's under it, whether it's in the center of it. I don't know. I don't know. But where it's 
it seems outside of the city of God, outside of the protection of God. Um, so that's a tough one. What is the size of hell? It's not bigger than heaven. That's a tough one too. I don't know. In the Bible, it gives some it gives some description of the size of heaven. Whether that's figurative or not, I don't know. But it doesn't for hell. It doesn't give any description how big it is. But you can imagine that's got to be a big place. All right. Um, all right. And. Let's keep going. Are there different realms of hell? Morning. Are there different realms? Uh, you know, we got two, three-story houses, five-story, we got apartment buildings. Is there different realms of hell? Is there different levels of hell? No. Or is, do you think uh, somebody is going to be suffering right next to the devil, like in the same fire? Ah. And the devil's like, next to you? Or do you think? Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, no. Oh. What do you think? He, he, he asked that again? Uh, is there different realms of hell? Is uh, there somewhere Satan's going to be and then somewhere people are going to be or are they all in the same? Probably all the same. Alright. Yeah, again, that's a tough one. Uh, we know that there's Tartarus and then there's that's supposed to be like a deeper place a dungeon, but that's not hell. But so far as you know, when it talks about hell, it's a uh, lake of fire, thrown into a lake of fire, and it's all the description of it. All right, if you could use some of these verses to answer your question, that'd be better, you know, prove it some verses. Is there a limbo or a waiting period before hell? I think that was, was that one you were going to talk about, Guillermo? No. What was it? Uh, what was the last one? What was the last one? Uh, okay, it wasn't, it wasn't purgatory. Somebody was purgatory. You, no, you weren't purgatory. Okay. All right, what do you guys think? Is there a limbo waiting period before you get to hell? Purgatory. And you can't just, if you, you can say yes or no, but ideally some proof, now that we've talked about it all. Limbo or waiting period before hell? What do you think, Carla, any thoughts? Yeah, well, I guess that's a fair answer. Biblically, what do you think? The best thing you can come up with, Carla? Still don't know? It's so uh, All right. Well, I, maybe I'm phrasing it wrong. Um, before hell. Yeah, I think that's phrased wrong. Because it's most, it's supposed to be before heaven. I think that's the whole idea of purgatory. Is that it's like a purifying before heaven. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. So it is what it is. You, you just go straight to, to it. You go straight to judgment, don't you? Yeah. Once so. you close your eyes, you're the judge. So. Yeah, there is believed that, that uh, like we talked about in purgatory, that, that after death, that's where you go. It's the purifying process. And then you go either to heaven or hell. Um, so, yeah, that one's a little, I think I phrased that question a little wrong. Is hell full of ice or fire? Fire. fire. All right, prove it. Any verse to prove this? Make a fire. Ooh, man. And he hasn't even been here the whole time. <laughs> Look at that. Fire Smart feet. guy. Alright, could it be ice? Doesn't seem like it. If there's, It just talks about fire, fire, fire. So it's hard to believe there would be ice. Um, I don't know. Nobody's been there. Yeah, I don't know. Josh was the one who brought that question up. That's right. That was good, good to think about. Okay. Uh... Is hell just abandonment from God? Um, so that's a, that's one that you guys should think about. It's probably going to come up. Is that hell is being excommunicated from the presence of God? You know, right now, even 
everybody's under the grace of God. Everybody's there, there's still hope in the world, but for him to completely pull himself back, totally alone, um, is it just that abandonment from God, or is it also torment? Is it also fire? Is it also, you know? That's another question. Do you guys have any thoughts? Maybe from some of the verses we've read. It does talk about. You know, his presence, not, you know, him kicked them, kicked out of the presence of God. Is it just that, or is there going to be fire and stuff too? Fire. Yeah. Again, verses. Is it fire like you and I know fire, or is it a different Right. Are we're, they going to be we're getting consumed, to that. Are they going to die? We're getting to that one. That's a good one. All right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, let's see, your question is right here, Carter. We're going to get to that. But what's literal, literal and figurative? All right, what is weeping and gnashing of teeth? Grinding your teeth? Grinding. Just being so angry and upset with yourself. All right, Josh says being angry and upset with yourself. What do you guys think? Imagine somebody goes through judgment, tossed into the lake of fire, weeping and gnashing of teeth. What would you be feeling right then and there? Anger, frustration, sad, because everybody had a fair choice to go the other way. Weeping, it's obviously, you know, crying. No. And gnashing of teeth. So, I mean, just picture that as crazy. We I always thought that the verse um, reflected like people's um, their grief or, or for making the choices that they did or out of wanting forgiveness. <clears throat> but the way that Elmer um, shared it with us is that they're uh, not doing it out of, oh, I'm sorry for the things that I did. It's that I'm here and I'm feeling, going through what I'm yeah. going through. And I always thought it meant that people in hell, or whoever was in hell, that there would be pleading, like, you know? But it's not, yeah. it's not that. Well, when you look at the story of, um, there's this story, yeah, with, with the, uh, the guy who's in, the rich man in, in, in Hades, and then Sh Lazarus with Abraham. And the, the rich man, nowhere in the story does he say, I don't deserve this, get me out of here. He just says, bring me some water. And then he says, warn other people. He never, he never, he never um, makes it seem like he's there undeserved. You know, he knows that he's, he, you know, that's where he's going to be. He knows that. He doesn't ever make a mention like, I shouldn't be here, kind of thing. He's saying, save everybody else. So, uh, yeah, like you said, it's not, a, it's not a form of, I don't deserve this. It's more of, I really messed up. Or, uh, you know, and I'm angry. Uh, maybe at myself. I don't know. But, you know, just weeping, crying because of that. I, I, can you imagine if I had a choice, heaven or hell, and I, and I realized that I messed up? And I almost like set myself there. Uh, that'd be, I would be furious or just so stressed out. You know, I, I don't even know how I would feel. Is that what you're kind of getting at? Kind of. Um, like, so, I don't think that they'll be there asking for God. No, no. Like, I don't think it's going to be due to that. I think it's going to be out of what they're feeling right there and then. Right. All right, so weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it's not like they're, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, whether they hate God, pro maybe, probably, but it's more of a, a regret. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have had that to where, like, you know, you could have you could have won that lottery ticket, but you threw it away, and you're just like, no! You know, it could have changed everything. $20 million, and you threw it away. 
I would never forgive myself. <clears throat> yeah, imagine that, eternity. Ugh. Is hell really eternal? Yes. Verses. Prove it. This is in the Bible. What? I gave you these, Abigail. If you want to look at these, I gave you some verses. But opinion, we don't need opinions. We want some proof. Eternal fire. Eternal punishment. Eternal fire. Is it really forever? It sure sounds like it. It sure sounds like it. What about people who've never heard of the gospel? Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> what about people who've never heard? In some country, no preacher's ever been there. They've never seen a cross, no Bible, they nothing. They wouldn't be judged like the people that knew about the gospel. Is that biblical? Yeah. I think I heard that those, don't those people get like a second chance, sort of like a second chance in a way? I have a video, I don't know if, I don't know if I'd show you, but um, it kind of answers that heard. question. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, the Bible does talk about judging you on what you know, and uh, but at the same time, in Romans, it says that God's revealed Himself to everybody through creation. Is that we just because of looking at creation, we all know that there is a God, and then not only that is that God's written there's this moral code in us that we know right from wrong, and so, so we just know. Somehow we just know that there is a God, and we know what's right and wrong just in us. What about Jesus? Do they know Jesus? Yeah, well, that's the thing. They, I don't know if they would know anything about Jesus. Nobody goes to the Father except for Him. Yeah, so it's it's a matter of trusting that God's going to be just. That He's going to be just. Like, okay, God, they never heard of Jesus, but they, you know. They did the best with what they knew, what they could. Will you still send them to hell? Or is there blood on our hands? I think that. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> is it our fault for not reaching them? This good video, the guy. We watch it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Just forward it to everybody. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It's like two. It's like two minutes. Um, two minutes long. I'll send it to you. Yeah. So that's a good one. But none of you have that excuse, Kimberly. None of you have that excuse, all right? I'm just kidding. All right, so uh, what about the Bible? Descriptions of hell are literal and figurative. All right? Elmer, any ideas since you like to play over there? What in the descriptions of hell are literal and which ones are figurative? What's, is the fire actually fire or is that a metaphor for something else? Any ideas? Well, what else can fire mean? Well, some of the like the descriptions um, of hell are like a, a complete darkness. But how can there be complete darkness <clears throat> if there's this lake of fire? What if it's darkness yeah. inside somebody? It's a like, dark fire. So. Or it can't be the fire as you and I know it. I mean, right here, if it says he, burning sulfur. Would would e these eternal bodies be affected by fire? Because you're going to be resurrected in a new body. Well, it says a fire that burns, oh, it's some, uh, a place that destroys soul and body. Yeah. It's an eternal fire. You so maybe fire? maybe it's a fire that's unknown to us. Maybe it's, uh, I've heard this preacher, just, just to give you an idea, uh, his name is Timothy Keller, Tim Keller, uh, and he's very well known, he's written a lot of books, and they asked him, do you think the description of hell fire is literal or figurative? And he says, I think it's figurative. <clears throat> he says, I think it's... And, oh, and then they said, oh, phew, thank God. And he says, I think it's figurative or metaphor for something much, much worse. <laughs> and then, oh no, you know. So it's, it's almost like this. Heaven. God says it's greater than you can imagine. You can't even imagine the riches. I don't know that we can imagine the the justice that God will 
provide for sin, you know, for the enemy, for the devil. You know, that link, I don't know that we can really fathom it. I don't know. You know, I think the best thing that we can is Gehenna. That's the best description we can comprehend is Gehenna, the fire burning there, stuff like that. So <clears throat> what's literal, what's figurative, it's difficult to say. Um, but that's our best knowledge right now. Any other thoughts on that question? Will you recognize friends in hell? Probably not. Hell's Bells, uh, that song they talk about, I think they talk about I'll be there with all my friends. I can't remember, I was going to play it for you guys and I forgot. But yeah, that Hell's Bells song is pretty popular. You know, like I'm going to be in hell, partying. Will you recognize your friends in hell? Will you recognize your friends in heaven? That's complete darkness. <laughs> I would think so. Why? Because they're in the resurrected bodies. That's that's what I would think. I would think you would. Be I don't able think to. you'll recognize them because they'll bring comfort knowing that you're next to somebody that you know. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I really don't know. I really don't. This so is what? up. This is more of a. So what do you guys think? But it's really besides the point. Who cares? That's yeah. Who cares? Who cares if you're your friends? You're gonna be, you know, in that terrible state. Oh, I think that eternal brother. If anything, no. If anything, it would bring you more pain, like to know that somebody, like, it would kill me if I were to be in hell and I saw my brother there. Like, oh my God, you didn't make, like, you're yeah. here too. Right. Like, right. not only for my pain, but now knowing, like, he's here too. Like, I yeah. don't know. I think it'd be worse. Right. No, I, I think so. You know, but if you're going for like a little bit, because you think of detention, no, you start. But, but, if you're but going like, there's to, there's no break. It's but not like you, you go in, it. like it's not like you're going, like gonna be in this room from like eight to five, and then you're done. You can go rest, and then come back and do the same, and be miserable from eight to five. It's like everlasting. Like don't get a break, don't get a snack. Like it's just That's never ending. Day night. But, but still, it's just like, you're saying it from a kind-hearted person. What if it's an evil person and he recognizes somebody? He's not gonna be oh no, not buddy. Yeah. No, no. they're gonna be like they're gonna I not be sentimental to somebody that they know. Yeah. I don't know. If you, yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be regret feeling in there. Okay. Um, what is Abaddon? That was a question. Uh, I think it was a deep pit, Abaddon, or destruction. That's what it meant, destruction. Uh, who will be in hell? Who will be in hell? That's my last question. Everyone. Okay, everybody. No, not everybody. Who will be in hell? Describe them. People that kill? Murderers? No, I don't believe that. No. Who else? I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just, you know, give me Somebody an answer. Somebody that doesn't believe in accept Christ. Somebody doesn't believe accept Christ. Okay, anybody else? You think there's going to be pastors in hell? Oh yes. Yeah. Priests? Oh, oh yeah. Come on, see. Anybody can be in hell. Religious Pharisees? Anybody. Good people? Yep. Uh, what about um, philanthropists? I don't know what that is, but yeah. I, well, I think that's good deeds or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like giving, giving to the world, help, helping end poverty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Good people, you know. It's maybe people who've never murdered. Maybe someone who's only lied. You know, who's going to be there? It's going to be a lot of people that we would probably not even know, or even think that they would be there. But I think the scary thing is that there's going to be people who thought they were Christians. Oh yeah, I was a Christian. I went to church. No, I'm sorry. You know, it isn't there. You know, there's there's. There's a small criteria to get out. There's a, there's only one way to get out of hell, you know, and there's there's a whole di different bunch of different ways to try and get, um, to get there. Yeah, one way to get out. So who will be in hell? Yeah, there's going to be pastors. There's going to be priests. There's going to be, uh, you know, anyone who uh, didn't genuinely give their life to Jesus, and anyone who hasn't genuinely been forgiven. Babies and kids? Uh, yeah, that's the big question. Will babies and kids, will animals be in there? Yeah, that's a big question. I think it goes to will the babies be in heaven? 
Because if not, where are they going to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a good question. I don't know if I can really answer that. I don't. I don't know. If I can answer that, but I think that was one of the first questions we like we talked with Elmer when he first got here, and for some reason, I guess we never thought about it. Like, what about all the kids or the children that are boarding? You know? Yeah. Yeah, true. All right, so let's answer this question. We'll do it briefly. We've only got about 10 minutes. If God is good, how could he send people to hell to burn for eternity? What do you guys think? So far, out of everything we've studied, why would God be good for sending people to burn in hell for eternity? Because they don't want to be with him. Okay. They don't want anything to be with him. Do we have free will? Yes, we do. Do you have the ability to reject God? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, C.S. Lewis says that hell's locked from the inside. Those who say, there's either two, they, he says there's two people in the end on Judgment Day. Those who say to God, Thy will be done. And then God, those who God says to them, Thy will be done. And then you know, you have your way. You, you rejected me, and this is the results. These are the consequences. And if you've accepted me, these are the, this is what happens. So, uh, I'm going to give you three reasons, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. So that if you get, if you get uh, confronted with the question, what will you say? And uh, there's, there's three reasons um, I'm going to give you to just think about. If God is good, how could He send people to burn in hell for eternity? There's three things you got to understand. The first one is God is holy, perfectly holy. And to understand that is, is that He is totally set apart from us. To, to think that God would be so hateful or to be so against any hell at all or any evil is to know that He's so holy. It's almost like a person who's a clean freak. That's what I was thinking about. I don't know that it's a bit, very good explanation, but so clean that not a little dust. They don't want it anywhere in the house. It's similar to God against evil or God against um, sin. Is that He's so perfect that he, there's not an ounce could be around him. And I'll give you a few verses. Um, Psalms, for you're not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. God cannot have evil in His presence. Isaiah, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. So when the seraphim proclaim, or the angels proclaim, Holy, 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 it's, He's so holy, so set apart that we can't imagine. And there's no, no evil can be in His presence. And, uh, and I'll get, get to that. You remember there's a few stories in the Bible where people have actually come close to the holiness of God, and you've seen what happened. There was a story in Uzzah where David is bringing the Ark of God into the city, and remember, there was a, God used to be in the Ark of the Covenant where His presence dwelled, and then it was tipping or something, and this guy Uzzah puts his hands out to stop it from you know, falling over or whatever, and he died on the spot. Boom. Dead. Why? Did he go to heaven? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I don't know. You know? He served his purpose. Okay, anyway, it's not... Yeah. I, so, it, and that's not the point, whether we went to heaven or not. We're just saying, <laughs> if God is holy, what happens to sin in His presence? You know, getting that close. There's a couple more. The priests, they used to... The priests would enter the Holy of Holies once a year, uh, the, and then they would actually tie a rope around their ankle so that if they weren't purified the way God set in place, that there, you have to do all these things to purify yourself to get into my presence. If they didn't do it properly, they would die right on the spot because God would actually, His presence would come and dwell with them. And uh, they would die if they weren't purified properly. Um, uh, and, and another one is on the mountain of God. You know, when God was giving the Ten Commandments to the people, He, was, he asked Moses to come up to the mountain. He says, make sure 
nobody touches the mountain. If they do, kill them. And it wasn't, I don't know that it was necessary they were going to die touching it, but he was, he didn't want anyone to defile his, you know, his presence was there. And uh, Moses couldn't even look at him in the face. He said, you die. You know, you can't. Um, even though it talked, said God talked to them face to face, it wasn't his. I would have been like, I'm dying anyways. Yeah. So the point is, is that God is so holy that for any human to be in his presence, we would, we would die. We just can't take it. And he's so perfect that he can't allow any sin or any, any blemish in his presence. And that in the Old Testament, we see that. If you had a mole, or if you had a finger shorter than one, or if you, if you were dirty, if you weren't clean properly, you could not enter into his temple. If one leg was shorter than the other, you couldn't serve. He needed perfection. And that, you know, that was just part of the deal. So he's holy. And that's why this, it's so serious. <coughs> Hell, serious is judgment, all right? And then to think about His holiness is there was only one way to appease it. And that was only by really God dying Himself. That there was no other way to satisfy, you know, the sin, the judgment is that, you know, He had, he had to die Himself to pay the price. That it was so high. All right, so that was one. He's holy. All right. Number two, if God is good, how could He send people to burn in hell? Because He's just. All right. How many people do you think right now in courts get away for doing? You know, they actually did it, but they get away. Or they? So how many people do you think in the world who've done something wrong but never, never were um, convicted for it? <coughs> how many people have killed somebody, buried them, nobody ever knew, or raped somebody? They never said anything. Or stole something, they never got caught, you know? That is not going to happen with God and His justice. It says in uh, Acts 17, God has set a day to judge the world with justice by the man He has appointed and proved to everyone who it is by raising Him from the dead, alright? Jesus is going to be the judge. Uh, Revelations, oh this one's crazy. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were open, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. Alright, so think about this. Everything you have ever done, written in a book. There's record of it. Everything. Every thought. Every nasty thought. Every wicked thought. Every, every time you've stole, every, every time you've, you've lied, it's all written down. There's, there's record of it. There's not a thing left unseen. And God keeps record and He says there's going to be a time we're going to stand before the throne to be judged. Alright? So there's a books open. The book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they were done as recorded in the books. Uh, whether that's going to be digital books, literal books, I don't know. But it's recorded either way. It's, whether it's on the cloud, I don't know. But it's going to be there. Revelations 20.15 And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So there's a record of everything everyone on the planet has done. In the book, in the books that are recorded, and there's only one way you're not going to get condemned to hell, is whether your name's written in the book of life or not. How do you get your name written in the book of life? Is baptism enough? No. We think it is. How? That's a big question. I mean, that would be the most important question. Okay, well, how the heck do I get in that book? My gosh. Yeah, that would be the, the, the most critical question. Okay, I did this, I did that. How do I know if I'm in the book or not? Uh, the Bible talks about a seal that He places on you. And that seal is the Holy Spirit. Is that you're sealed. That you're mine. And you're, you're in. 
And that's really the only way you will know is when you know there's a transformation that occurs in you. you know, when you when you when you believe, yeah, baptism is certainly a part of it. But the when it really what really makes it authentic is when he comes in and you're sealed. And then your name is written from that day, your name is written in the book of life. Can it be erased? That's a whole other question, but uh, I personally don't think so. But, you know, you guys have to, you know, only God knows. What about all the deeds you've ever done? Can those be erased? All the bad deeds you've ever done, are they still going to be written in there? Or can they be erased? What do you think? They're still going to be in there. Everything you've ever done, every lie, every... If Jesus says, if what he did is true, that he forgave us, it says, from the far as the east is from the west, I've forgiven you, I've forgotten it, it's gone. Maybe when he opens up your book, it's like, wait a minute, what the heck? It's all blank here. That'd be awesome. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Dang. That'd be crazy. That means it's wrong book. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, the, it, the justice of God is not, not a thing is going to be left missed. We think we're going to get away with something? No. E everything is recorded. Does he offer forgiveness? Absolutely. Alright, has God ever punished? Some people think God's not that cruel. He could never do that. Has he ever done, has he ever punished people before? Yeah. yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah? He sent fire and brimstone on the whole city wiped it out he flooded the whole world at one point killed everybody you know does he is his does he have this um, justice that needs to be satisfied that I can't take this sin anymore could he do it yeah I mean he's, he's done it before and there he said I'm never going to do that again you know and, until the judgment is when the last one's going to occur um, and the last point is this one. God is good. How can He send people to hell? Because an infinite God provides an infinite punishment. That was kind of new to me. But listen to this thought process. I got this from a, a Paul, apologist. He says, If God is infinite and the sinner has offended God, then that is an infinite offense. Okay, so think about a, a capital punishment. All right, when you've done something so wrong and said, You know what? You deserve to die. Really, that's an infinite punishment because they're dead. All right, it's not like, okay, you can go to jail for 20 years and you're good. You can't pay for your debt. So in the same way, when, you, but when you're dealing with a God who's timeless, who's infinite, and you've offended Him, the punishment, what would that be like? If judgment upon the sinner were temporal, and that means a sinner's suffering is sufficient to appease an infinite God. So if God put a time frame on your punishment, like hell was only a certain period, or something like that, then you could actually, in a way, pay for your sins. You, you could, well, I mean, not that, but you could appease, you could do enough to where he's satisfied. Again, appeal. Yeah, but you can't. You can't. You've offended an infinite God. Uh, this verse was used, Galatians 2.21, <laughs> Do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. So if there was a way to appease God other than Jesus, there was no point for Him to come. So the point is that if God is infinite and you offend an infinite God, the consequences are infinite. There's no way to appease them. Not a thing we could do to appease that wrath. Uh, then the devil who will be, had been deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire burning sulfur, join the beast and the false prophet, they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Eternal. Infinite. Forever and ever. Ugh. It's crazy. Alright, this is my last thought. Alright, so out of all that wretchedness, hell is going to be torment, fire, 
it's gonna be you're gonna be alone you're gonna be it's gonna be darkness you're gonna be the devil's gonna be there it's gonna be the wretched place humanity has ever seen worse than the gas chambers worse than war worse than um, the prisons worse than the worst place you can imagine all evil will be secluded to this one place but God gives us a way out and I think that is the good news that that is the good news and I'm gonna re just read you a few verses Romans 8.3, it says, The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent His own Son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. Alright, so what, the way out of this... we and, and I think you have to think about, have any of you guys offended this infinite God have any of us done that or how could you do that any any thoughts how could you offend an infinite God thoughts all right so Adam and Eve offended God he's how did they do it they disobeyed his command yeah. He said, well, there's one thing, don't eat the fruit of this tree. And they did it. Has God given humanity any commands besides that? I mean, that one's not for us. Has God given us any commands? Anybody know of any? Try the Ten Commandments. Okay. Don't steal. Any others? Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and your mother. Any others? Don't kill. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. Don't even do it with your eyes. Any others? Don't covet. You know what that means? That's being jealous or wanting what someone else has. What? Are any others? Uh, honor the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Um, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You know that we're saying them all out of order, but you know those are those are them. Hold on. So, we've all offended an infinite God. The punishment is infinite. There's no way out. You did it. You know, that's really what it comes down to. You cannot appease any way. Say, I'll do this, I'll do anything. No, there's not a thing you could do. You've offended me. And you just think about that justice, that He's so just that He can't, because it would violate His justice. And uh, this, this verse is in Isaiah where it says, Jesus took our pain and our weakness on the cross. He bore it on the cross so that we could be healed. That was the point of Jesus and this last one. God saved us by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so none of us could boast about it. So the whole point is that you know people are going to go to hell. They're going to be our friends, they're going to be our family members, they're going to be people we sit next to in church. The only way any of us aren't going is not because we're so good, right here. It's not because we're better, it's not because we did something, it's because of God's grace touched us. And there's only one way to get it, and that's by trusting in the sacrifice Jesus made for us. So... We're ending this whole thing on hell. I hope you guys got a good idea on it. And that's going to catalyst us into the next topic we're going to get into, which we'll talk about next week. Which is? Heaven. We'll talk about heaven. Because I just figured that I don't know if I really am concerned how good heaven's going to be as long as I'm not in hell. You know, that's kind of the, the view I had. If hell's that bad, and heaven's with God. I don't even care how good it is. Just, I, you know, as long as I'm with you and we're good, you know, I don't have to go there. Everything else is extra. So, again, if you get encountered with these questions, I hope you know how to answer, and you can give a good answer. Just not just, well, you're going to hell because you suck. No, that's, you know, think about it, um, because in reality, this, your friends, my friends, are going. And last week I asked some people if you could ask somebody about hell. Anybody have a chance to do that? I asked myself. I only asked one person. That's, that's better than me. That's good. 
I didn't get a chance to ask you. I tried a couple times. I asked somebody today. The customer? No. It was hard, though. It's hard to talk about it. So I invited a friend to church instead. I said, yeah, you want to come to church? Which I was kind of cool. He said, you know what? I've been thinking about going. Good. So maybe you don't want to talk about hell, but I, you should at least, you should, I mean, if it's really real, you should consider if Jesus is the only way out, I would consider telling them about it. You know, so I'm sorry. We're a little over. Uh, let's pray. We're going to end. Thank you. We, you know what we're having tonight? We have a lot of stuff going.